that statement from Kaplan would come as no surprise to the work that you've done uh, detailing the economic result of uh, social inequality. Um, how do we fix it? Well, I think there's a lot that we can do to fix it. I think it starts with acknowledging uh, that racial disparities are persistent and large uh, and solvable. Um, these disparities are, you know, the longstanding vestige of years of policy uh, in this country that disadvantaged black workers and other workers of color as well, while providing uh, an economic advantage to white workers and, and white Americans. So in order to undo these things, it's a matter of acknowledging the differences are there, and then having an open eye toward how policy either improves or worsens those disparities. Valerie, it, it strikes me that, that ultimately this comes down to one thing, and that is education. We need to have a degree of education that allows everybody to participate in the workforce equally. Now, getting there is we're going to require a multitude of, of factors. But how do we make sure? How do we make sure that everybody gets access to college? Do we need to have free, free college tuition? How do we make sure that at kindergarten uh, that we don't see children falling behind? How do we make sure that the education system works to solve this problem? And is that ultimately what it comes down to? So I would disagree that that's ultimately what it comes down to. I think that's part of it and an important part of it. Uh, I disagree slightly because we know that over the last 40 or 50 years, educational attainment has increased significantly uh, among all uh, groups in this country. But what we tend to see less progress on uh, are these persistent economic disparities. So in thinking about how, again, our policies influence this, I think we have to start from a point of acknowledging that no policy is race neutral. It's definitely important to invest in early childhood education to make sure that all children who attend school in this country uh, have equitable access to the kinds of resources that will give them the best education. But we also need to acknowledge and understand the fact that even at every level of education, when we look at uh, labor market statistics, we still see a two-to-one black-white unemployment disparity. We still see sizable uh, racial wage gaps at every level of education. So education alone does not uh, resolve the racial disparities that we see in this country. So, Valerie, the, the Fed's two mandates, right, are full employment uh, and inflation. And you have a great chart that I wanted to highlight talking about the black and white wage gap um, and just how that gap persists, whether you're in the lower, the medium or the higher end income, particularly at the higher end, and no matter what your education level actually is. It seems to me for the Fed to get to that full employment again and actual inflation, we do need wage growth coming from this portion of the population. How does that happen? Yeah, I think part of uh, the Fed's policy to maximize uh, employment is one way of doing that. I think decisions about when to raise the federal funds rate should be data-driven and, and based more than just a single measure, the, the NARU, which is commonly cited, but really should have an eye toward uh, what uh, the labor market uh, is doing and how different groups in this economy are uh, faring, as well as keeping an eye on wage growth. Uh, I think that that the decision about when to increase the federal funds rate should take into account whether or not wages are, are rising significantly, in addition to keeping an eye on uh, unemployment across different communities and not just a single number. What is your view on quantitative easing? What impact does that have? Well, again, I think that's one of the tools that the uh, Fed has at its disposal uh, to uh, influence the economic uh, recovery, to influence economic growth, to particularly uh, in the current situation that we're in, to stimulate uh, growth and recovery. Uh, but again, when we're talking about addressing uh, racial disparities, I think full employment is a major priority as far as the, the Fed's uh, responsibilities are concerned. But it also requires uh, that Congress uh, pass uh, fiscal uh, policies that also help to get mm -hmm. at narrowing those gaps beyond uh, what the Fed is able to do. 
Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's sort of two schools of thought. Like one says the Fed's policies are actually exacerbating uh, social inequality. The other school is saying actually fiscal policy and U.S. policy is just so bad that the Fed has to then make these decisions uh, in order to fix it, which is then making things even worse. Can you give me some insight into what you see? I think it's incredibly important uh, that both fiscal policy and monetary policy work together uh, for the aim of you know, making this economy as strong as it can be for as many people uh, in this country that, you know, we, that need to experience economic growth and economic recovery. I would say from the last uh, recession, as we were moving into recovery, uh, initially, uh, the uh, number of measures that were taken with the Recovery Act on the fiscal side were important in, in preventing things from getting much worse. But I would say that the Fed's monetary policy uh, went much further in that they continued to hold uh, interest rates at historic lows for an extended period of time. And I think that was a significant contributor to bringing us to historic uh, low rates of unemployment and for what was, at that point, uh, the longest economic expansion on record.